Hey, what's up? I'm not Dan, but in this video I'm going to show you how to identify the limiting and excess reactants. It's Hey, welcome back. As always, before we uh, go any further, please be sure to grab a periodic table, a calculator, and some paper. All right, let's go. Hey, everyone. All right, so before we get into any of the calculations here, I'm going to point out that I'm not really going to spend a whole lot of time explaining why the conversions look the way they do, because I've already done that in pretty great detail in the previous videos. So if you're still having issues with molar conversions or stoichiometric conversions, please go check out those videos first before coming here. Uh, the purpose of this video is just to learn how to identify the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. All right, so let's take a look at this first equation here. All right, so you can see I got my, you know, my Molar Express up at the top. All right, and our first question here, we've got uh, the combustion of methane. And then it says, given 2.4 moles of CH4, which is methane, and 328 grams of oxygen, what is the limiting reactant? And we can also assume that, it's, that we're also going to be looking for the excess reactant. All right, so, well, first off, I want you to notice that this question has two givens. That is your clue that this is a limiting reactant question. If it was just a normal, regular conversion question, there would only be one given. So the fact that there are two givens means this is limiting reactant, and it also means we're actually doing two calculations. All right, so let's take our first given here, which is 2.40 moles of CH4. Put that over 1. And I already know that on the bottom here, I'm going to have moles of CH4. Now I just got to figure out where I'm going to go to. Now, since the question doesn't specify which of our products are going to convert into, we get to choose. Now, myself, I always like to just choose the very first one. Just makes it easy. So we're going to convert into uh, carbon dioxide. All right, so we're just doing a moles 1 to moles 2 conversion here. Moles of CO2. I'm going to take my numbers from the balanced equation, right? So there's a 1 there and a 1 there, okay? So I multiply across. This is really easy. I don't need a calculator. The answer is 2.40 moles of CO2, okay? Well, that's the first calculation. Now I'm going to need to take my other uh, given, which in this case is 328 grams of O2 over 1. All right, so first I'm going to convert from grams to moles. So my molar mass is 32 grams of O2 for every one mole of O2. Now I'm going to do my moles to moles conversion. So moles O2 goes on the bottom. Moles of CO2 goes on top. And this is a 1, and that's a 2. All right, since I'm kind of running out of room on the side there, I'm just going to put my answer right here. So 328 divided by 32 divided by 2, and the calculator gives us the answer of 5.13 moles of CO2. And that's, of course, rounded to the correct number of sig figs. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the two answers. Well, clearly 2.40 moles of carbon dioxide is smaller than 4, or I'm sorry, 5.13 moles of CO2. So that means that CH4 right here, this is my limiting reactant, right? LR for limiting reactant because it makes less, which then leaves O2 here to be our, whoops, wow, that is a really bad E. <laughs> that is terrible. Um, eh, so I'm just going to, for some reason, the um, eraser isn't showing up there. So I'm just going to put ER. All right, so that is my excess reactant. All right, so we've successfully identified limiting and excess reactant for that question. Let's take a look at my next example here. So here's our new equation. Here's our two givens. <clears throat> so we're going to do the same thing as before. So I'm going to take 234 grams of the nickel-2 chloride over 1. So first step is grams 1 to moles 1. So this is a molar mass question. The molar mass of nickel 2 chloride is 129.7 grams of nickel 2 chloride for every 1 mole, like so. 
All right, now we do a moles one to moles two calculation. Once again, I'm just going to convert into the very first uh, unit or first product here. So we've got one mole of the nickel two hydroxide over one mole of the nickel two chloride. All right, so we multiply across and we get 1.80 moles of our product nickel two hydroxide okay and just give myself a little more space I'm gonna scoot down just a tab all right all right so here we go next uh, given is 3.20 moles of NaOH over one and this is just a simple moles to moles conversion here so moles of NaOH on the bottom, moles of the nickel two hydroxide on top, All right? And this is a one and that is a two. All right, so 3.20 divided by two equals 1.60 moles of the nickel two hydroxide. Okay, so now that I've done my two calculations, I'm just going to compare. Obviously, 1.60 is a smaller amount, meaning that sodium hydroxide here, this is our limiting reactant, leaving the nickel-2 chloride to be our excess reactant. Okay, so that's all you do is you take your two givens, convert it into the same product, you compare the two numbers to see which one makes less, and that's your limiting reactant. The one that makes more is the excess reactant. All right, so I've got another question for he here for you guys to solve. All right, and let me kind of zoom down here. All right, it's being slow again. Come on, come on. All right, here it is. So I want you guys to try this one out on your own. So here in a little bit, I'm going to ask you to pause. So pause the video, obviously, and then uh, you work it out on your own. And then when you start it up again, you will see the answer and you can check it. All right, so here we go. So pause this video in one, two, three, pause. All right, so here's the answer. If you guys have any further questions, uh, please feel free to ask. I'd love to help you guys out. All right, thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you have any further questions, all you got to do is either comment below or you can just send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. All right, thank you so much, guys. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later.